this is short hammer it is the 26th of february 2020 and this is trading zones first off we're looking at the spy the market has been pulling back in our last video i mentioned a few levels but i didn't think that we would be down this far and if you're looking at the spy uh, as we began to drop the first target that you watch for is the 320 area we see a little bit of uh up of i say a mini uh supply demand area here and then we have a shelf here at the 315 so i was watching the 320s 315s and then we're down um the next level i'll be watching would be the 307s below that the 302s so my thought process on this is i've just been playing zone to zone and on the initial uh drop down below this 332 uh, area here what you noticed is, and you'll see this across a variety of uh, tickers that I'll pull up. Let's look at the four hour. There'll be a back test. So on the roll down, you saw a back test of these levels in each level on this gap. You see a back test here. You see back test of all these levels as we're going down. And we'll see if this continues to the downside. For me, I am just wait. So the, I wake up, I see where the levels are, and I wait for pops. And then I look to see if we're breaking through the new levels. If not, I'm fading it. So we're below the 315.49 area, which is my uh, upper level. The lower level I have is a 307.11. So if we can't find the market opens, I'm not getting in anything. So I'm just going to wait. If we can't find uh, strength to push up over the 315, I'm going to fade this down to the 307. We'll see how that works. If we open up gap down to 307, I'm going to look for either sellers or buyers at this level. And if the sellers have control, I'm fading to 302. Let's move on. Peek at Amazon. Amazon gave us a beautiful setup. Pull this up on the daily. So gap down, back test, right here at the 2033 area. Couldn't get above it. Fade to the 20, 2001 area. Then dip down to the next level, the 1957, 1960 area right here. Buyers did step in a little bit above this area, pushed us back up a small amount. Now what we have to see is if this is faded back down. If we look at the gap, if this does close the gap, we can go all the way down here into the 1870s. Is that possible? It's possible. Is it probable? Maybe not. Buyers may jump in before that. So I'm keeping an eye on Amazon. If we go below the 1950s, I will be fading this down to the 1930s and so on. So we'll see where, for me, this is a level where the, the buyer should try. But Every time you turn around, the news seems to be worsening as far as the coronavirus and the threat to global supply chains. So it does seem as if the market is in, you know, CYA mode, cover your butt mode, I'd say. And people are just trying to take profits once they've been riding this up. And the bears are excited to try to, to finally get a little bit of downward momentum. So when we didn't, uh, well, when we, when we didn't stop here at the, at the 2033 or the 2050s, you have to sort of keep an eye on this and say, hey, how low can we go? And that's where we are right now. There are people that are starting to leg into longs. I'm not one of those people, but I will soon begin to start putting on small positions that I can scale if we continue to the downside. And then if the momentum reverses, that I can average into a little bit more for the pop. But we're not in a bearish market yet, still bullish. So we just have to wait and see how all this shakes out because it's just been a few days of a shakeout. And we've had this happen before and had a massive rally. So I'm not saying start getting long. I'm not saying, it's, I'm not saying be biased either direction. When we're running nonstop to the upside, don't be biased. And when we're selling to the downs, when we're selling off, don't be biased either. This is a pullback. We'll see how this shakes out. 
but just if you're taking long positions as we're going down, make sure you're buying time if you're getting options. And if you're getting shares, don't go all in. Just take your time, look at some names that you like, things that have, that have uh, beat on earnings, you like the numbers. And if you get in, just know that you may have to sort of grit your teeth a bit and there'll be a little bit of pain. But you know, look for strong companies that you feel will bounce back and look for those demand levels that you really like those companies at because they may be either below or at that level for a while we consolidate or they could massively bounce and we could rally. So we'll see. We've been selling a few days. Just keep your eyes on these levels. The next level, you know, is the 1950s, below that the 1930s, below that 1916s, and below that the the 18, let me see, 1880s. So we'll see how uh, all this shakes out, but we have clear levels. And if we go back up, we need to get back above the 2001 area on Amazon. Netflix, we are just below the 361 area. Our lower portion is 343. We were watching Netflix closely for strength above 384. Now that we're going down, watch for a buyback above the 361 area, 361 70s, and see if buyers step in and give us a squeeze to the 370s. If we continue to sell, the next target that I have will be the 343s. Could people, someone step in before that here at this midpoint at the 350s? That's possible. But my target would be the, three, the, the 343s. So depending how we open, if we open and we can't, you know, get some strength above the 361.70s to the 362s, I'll be fading this back down and I'll exit a portion of my position right around the 350s. If we're above this and the buyers are stepping in and we're squeezing up, I'm going to watch the 364 area and see if we get through that. And then I'll be targeting the 370s. And if you look at this uptrend, we're still uptrending on, on Netflix. Next up is NVIDIA. Nice little pullback on NVIDIA. And I'll do like this this area here what's this 252 the trend line is down here on the daily chart we'll see if we make it there that's a long well based on how far we've come it's not that far of a way to go but netflix is interesting i'll keep an eye on it they uh the earnings weren't bad at all um we saw this run up people were very bullish on netflix so i'll be watching to see if we can hold the the 259 area, 260 area. Do buyers step in? Um, for me, I would like to see a little bit more. Let's see. Uh, this area, yeah, this area isn't bad right here around the 251 area. It looks a little bit stronger than these areas here. So we'll see if we get this down to 251. So I'll be watching for a failure below the 260s and see if we can fade this a little bit more. Uh, the uptrend is way down here. I doubt we're going to the two two forties today, but it's anything's possible. So I'll be watching Netflix, watching these levels, seeing if we buy back above the two sixties, and if not, fade down to the two fifty twos. I will be short, and I will be exiting some of that position around the two fifty six to the two fifty four seventy area if I'm fading Nvidia, and all this is going to be based on where we open and what level we are. If we're above, if we open and we're above the 266 area, then I'm not going to short, try to short above this and then have this be an area where the buyers can step in. If we're above this, I'll be looking to get long or looking to fade from the next level, the 274s. to Microsoft and Microsoft a similar setup we saw on the this gap down the back test to try to get back over these 174s it didn't happen made it more to the downside at the next level tapped pushed back up we see this how this is shaking out so just keep an eye on this Microsoft if you're looking for um, plateaus there's one here at this 167 area 
there's a mini plateau at the 164, but the next uh, area that's strong is the 156s. And a true plateau is down here at 141. So I doubt we're going that low, but that will be a true plateau on Microsoft. Peek at ABBV. And looking at the daily chart, nice pullback from the 98s. We're down in the 89.18s. This is a potential plateau. We see a lot of consolidation around this area, this area also all the way across. We have to see if the sellers push us down to the next level here, which is around the 83 or 84, 42 area. So I'm keeping an eye on ABBV to see how it um, reacts to this pullback. They had pretty good earnings and pretty good guidance. See the push up here. So we just have to wait to see um, if buyers are jumping in here at these different levels. There are value buyers that are waiting for these, these tickers to fall to lower levels. so They can get in cheap and ride them back up. But like they say, don't be the first and don't be the last. So you definitely don't want to be the first person in guessing the bottoms. Wait for the bottom to declare itself, retest and hold, then you can ride it back up. If you're a scalper, you can jump in. But looking at the four hour chart, this is a potential level where buyers may step in. We'll see. Moving on to Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is interesting. It's pulled back to, um, I'll say roughly into our buy zone. And below this, if we dip into the 86, is that's definitely a buy area for us. With earnings uh, coming up, I do like Dollar Tree. So I was in a small position on Dollar Tree that I exited. So I may be getting back in one day. I may be getting back into Dollar Tree soon. We'll see. I do believe they have exposure to China as far as with their global supply chain. So I'll be keeping an eye on Dollar Tree. But I do like the levels that it's pulling back into right now. And the, I may start, I'm going to keep an eye on Dollar Tree closely to look to start potentially legging into this and maybe build a position here. And as long as we don't make a lower low through the 8530s, I'll probably hold that position and scale on any pops. When I say scale, I mean scale out. So as it goes back the other direction, scale out is when it pops. But I do like Dollar Tree. And let's see. Where is ISRG? Oh, nice. Pull back to these levels. This is a potential level where buyers could step in. This uh, five, it's like the five sixties. Hmm. I do like ISRG. Earnings are April. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So I'll be watching ISRG to see if buyers step in around this the 560 area. And if not down here at the 543s, I'll be keeping an eye on this. I do expect there to, to be a run up headed into uh, earnings potentially. So we'll see how that shakes out on ISRG. I do like that we're roughly about three weeks out. Um, so there may be a little bit of uh, runway here for a nice retrace in, into the 580s. So I'll be keeping an eye on this. I know, I'm trying to think, because there was something from China that came out of China that China was cutting any tariffs on uh, companies like ISRG that... Uh, that uh, just medical supply companies and I think they have the Da Vinci. So we'll see how this, how this shakes out, but I'm keeping an eye on ISRG here. I do like these levels, these 560s. I'll see if we get a little bit lower, but it's to the point now for me where I'm going to start looking for levels to start just testing the water, putting out testers for a lot of these tickers and uh, being about, out about 30 days, two weeks to 30 days and start putting out testers and feelers to see if the market reverses. But for me, when I put out a feeler, so if today we're, we back test here and we start to sell, I'm not putting out a feeler till we get down here and I see some buyers step in. Once I see a, uh, a, a bit of buying and a bit of contention where the buyers are battling a level, and I'm also gonna be watching the futures. The buyers have to be battling a level for me 
before I will jump in front of the moving train. So I have to, I have to see that, that, hey, the buyers have decided that this is a level where they feel comfortable legging into positions and that the sellers feel that, hey, this is an area where the buyers could grab back control of the wheel and push us back to the upside. So I'll be keeping an eye on uh, the tickers that I mentioned. And uh, ISRG is interesting. Dollar Tree is interesting. Um, not sure if I went through Goose yet. Goose is interesting. They have significant uh, exposure to the Chinese market, as we saw during the last boycott. So, which I think may have been, may have been here. But um, if Goose gets down here into the 26s, I will be interested. And so I'm watching Goose closely here to uh, maybe this will be shares, but I will be building a position in Goose um, potentially out into, uh, into June. So we'll see how that shakes out. But I do like Goose at these lower levels. I'm going to do a little bit more digging, but I like Goose and I will probably be looking for a position here. And just a note, if I get a, if I start to build my position around here, we pull back a little bit, I might average my position when we get to the next level, the 24, 22s. But if this thing starts to roller coaster to the downside, I'm out. I'm not holding something beyond the point where it's through my next level. When it hits the next level, so I may get in about 25% of the position here. And then if it begins to bounce, um, I may get in, you know, get in a few more. But right around here, I'm going to exit at least half of the position and then hold the rest to see if we can leg through this area. This is an area that I had as a potential dip buy we're through that. So reaching to the next level, this 26 is if we get down there, I will be getting long, and, um, but I just won't be in full size. And I'll give it room to reach the next level where I'll then average in some more. And if we start to see a reversal and a buyback through here, I'll probably average in a little bit more and then see if we leg. And then if we roll back through the bottoms, I'm out. So that's, that's what I'm watching for on Goose. Check the four hour. So we'll see um, how this shakes out. And yeah, I like, I like those setups. If you like this video, please don't hesitate to tap the like button. And if you'd like to receive more content like this, subscribe to our channel, The Power of Pivots where you can get content from not just me, but from Elisa as she shows you how she uses her power of pivot script to find great intraday and uh, swing plays utilizing the power of pivot script. Huh, that's interesting. I have news popping up on my other screen. Pardon me for being distracted. Uh, thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your week trading.